and it's Alan Clifford on BBC Radio Nottingham and thinking about how you've coped with the, the goings on, shall we say, and the difficulties, the troubles, uh, the pandemic, the lockdown and having to face the fact that you're not able to do so much, you're not able to socialise, you're not able to see loved ones, you are learning new technology, new techniques and new tips. I'd love to hear what you've done to breach the divide one way or another, or just keep yourself sane in mind and body. If you've taken up new hobbies, if you started volunteering somewhere, what are you doing to get through all of this? 0800 678 3434 is your call number. And it's free to call. And you can also use the text. It's 81333. Knots as the first word, and your text will cost your standard network message rates. But here is Keely Taverner, who's a psychotherapist and well-being blogger uh, from Key for Change. And Keely's got some thoughts to share with you this morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Alan. I'm well. I'm well. Can't complain. No. and uh, be alive. Well, and of course, if you weren't well and you were complaining, we'd kind of question why you're here, because you are somebody who's got some thoughts on staying positive uh, and dealing with the trauma and the crises that are coming our way. Just to sum it up for me, if you would, your last, I'm trying to wait, is it 10 months really since uh, this all mm-hmm. started? What, how would you uh, sort of sum those 10 months up for you personally, Keely? I think for me, it was incredibly difficult um there's aspects of my business that just shut down automatically and i think i think something about my personality style meant that when adversity knocks i channel my energy into what i can control and i think that's been something that has been the kind of theme for my life channel your energy into what you can control and so that led me for the first time to have the space to begin to write programs, which is what I'd, I'd wanted to do for many years. So I began to synthesize my knowledge about, you know, the human condition. And I began to write programs. I wrote a program called Pain Into Purpose. So that's one of the ways that I felt empowered. And it's one of the ways that I encourage others to think about, you know, when situations arise that aren't in our control, we have to be really careful because if we start to fight what is beyond our control, that is a factor that will fuel common mental health problems. Depression. Now, isn't it interesting yeah. in the wider view of what's going on, there are people, it seems, who are trying to fight the thing they can't control by denying it exists or saying that the mm-hmm. rules aren't right. Would you agree that that is a kind of case of people not being able to control things but trying to control the uncontrollable? Exactly. If you, it, it, you know, if you're not focused on... If you if we focus on on the loss and there's no two ways about it, we have lost a great deal. However, the importance of you, you like I said, you know, channeling your energy into what you can control, projects that we may have put off, it is potentially a time to 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 give that some energy. However, obviously we're now in a second lockdown, and I think it's far harder for people to get that gusto. Um, where certainty, uncertainty seems the new certainty. So try to work on things that you can change, let the world Mm -hmm. take care of itself, which is sort of where we were a year ago. I mean, how many of us really got too bogged down in the, the bigness of it all? Most of us were living our lives day by day. And that's what we've got to continue to do. And the opportunities yeah. that have arisen are interesting to me. You, you you spotted the chance to change your way and do something you always wanted to do for people who perhaps haven't got quite the same business mind as yours. And yeah. they hear on the radio, yeah. oh, use the time to do what you want to do. What are the first baby steps for people, even after 10 months of living through this? What are the first baby steps of taking control over something and, and making uh, your life a bit better? I think one of the the best places to start is routine, is putting a routine in place because the novelty of, 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 you know, watching TV and episodes and, and, you know, binge watching is slowly wearing off and actually has an adverse impact on our well-being because, you know, we need to move. So one of the ways you can begin is to try to structure routine around dinner times, you know, whether it means you're, you're, you're watching, you know, doing some exercise, but I really encourage people to develop a routine because that just gives you small milestones to be able to work towards. And small wins are very important when so much is out of our control. 
people may have tried this. They, they've thought, you know, I'm going to take up knitting or I'm going to go and yes. build a shed, <laughs> yes. whatever. Yes. And then it, yes. it doesn't quite go as they expect. How do you know when to get off the horse and try something else? Well, I think, well, if you've, if you've given it your best and, and nothing's kicking off, I think, I think that the, the, the issue here is if we don't take responsibility for our well-being, then, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be very difficult for us to recover, to bounce back. And I think, and I think that is a real challenge for us. You know, it's also mm. N- the NHS, but, you know, the, the, the media are very clear that they're at breaking point. So it, it does. What does that suggest if you go to your doctors? You know, we are concerned about going to our doctors because we're, we're very mindful of not putting more and more pressure. So it's almost that it's not that like we, you must force yourself to find something, but there is an incredible benefit to, you know, also thinking about community spirit. Who do you, you know, is there someone you might need to check in with on a daily basis? You know, I, the, the reality is it's just very difficult times. Mm. And if we don't take responsibility and try to find a way, then it's, it's, it's only natural that our well-being, our mental health will decline. And that is an issue. And so what is the alternative? There are charities out there. You've got Mind. You've got Samaritans who we can reach out to. But also, you know, thinking about, you know, checking with elder citizens, thinking about how can we create meaning? There's, there's one of the books I read for my master's, which was Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, and he was in a prisoner of war camp. And, you know, peeling potatoes was his thing. And he made that purposeful. And I, I can't encourage people more so now than ever. And it's not that we do toxic positivity as well, because we also know that's particularly dangerous when it leads to denial, Ooh. it leads to distortion. We, we, we are in difficult times and we need yeah. to accept that. And also, if we can, you know, um, I think about my daughter recently who was, I could tell, you know, it was Groundhog Day. And I opened up the cookbook and I was thinking, like, what can we cook? So cooking from scratch became a bit of a thing. thing. It's it's you interesting know? how I think, yeah, the kitchen has proven to be a focal point uh, and uh, also... The, the idea of keeping in touch with people and, and re-establishing contact is, is a good time. So people you haven't seen for ages, you can always reach out and say, this, this lockdown's crazy, we haven't chatted for ages. Do you fancy you know, coming into uh, a, a sort of wider chat circle, as it were, and, and, and you know, just reaching out and finding uh, lost friends? It, it's a good time for that. Killy, hang on there. I want to talk some more with you, including about your own personal experience, because you've been through, if, in case people are listening, saying, oh, it's all very good for an academic to sit there and tell us how to live our lives. Keely's story... Uh, It's quite an extraordinary one of transformation and change for herself. So she is talking uh, this morning from a position of absolute knowledge and understanding of how people can get through difficult times. So, Keely, hang on for us there. It's 24 minutes past 10 and some promises now from Calvin Harris and Sam Smith. Promises on a Friday morning. Calvin Harris and Sam Smith on a lovely, sunny, blue-skied Friday morning. So lovely is it out there. I, I felt as though I was coming in from Newark on Sea this morning. The fields are all flooded around. Uh, so you've got uh, a beautiful blue sea, it looks like, with the sky reflected in the water. Uh, and Newark rising like a little island, like the, something out of the Seychelles, uh, as I drove in around the A46 <laughs> Newark bypass, which doesn't make it sound like the Seychelles. I don't think they have a, uh, a Newark bypass in the Seychelles. Hey, look, we're doing all we can to get through this. You're doing what you can. You're helping others. Uh, others are helping you. Got to reach out and make sure those people know you're helping. Uh, the, the, the help they're giving you is helping you. And with thoughts on this, Keely Taverner, a psychotherapist, has been sharing the, the, the idea of change and embracing uh, new things. But it's not all about the new, Keely. We'll come on to, you know, in a sense, what we might want to keep the same throughout of all this. But on the subject of change, your life story is an extraordinary one because now here you are as a qualified psychotherapist, amongst other things, master's degree level trained, I think. Mm. Uh, and yet, well, less than 20 years ago, take us back to where you were in 2002. Yeah. Uh, I'd be asking people to leave the yellow bag behind at the till and purchase a blue when I was at IKEA checkout operative and in an abusive relationship 
And despair really took me to the bookshop after watching Oprah Winfrey's um, show. And um, I decided to start to read self-help books because I couldn't work my way out of my situation. Everybody else seemed to judge me and more or less call me a bit of an idiot for being and staying in it. And I, I really needed to understand what, what was going on. And self-help books was the place where I began. And that just inspired me to go back to college, to do an access course, which led me to Bruno University, where I did my first degree. I did a degree with a placement that took me to Wormwood Scrubs Prison, where I, I met my first mentor and really began to understand a great deal about the human psychology in, in the flesh. Um, and then I felt that I needed to just carry on, which is where I went and did my master's at Metanoia and, and um, qualified as a psychotherapist in 2015 and started my own business too. So, yes, <laughs> it's been a massive journey. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I not only get it, um, you know, through my studies, but it's a walk that I walk and continue to walk as I, you know, expand and push my own boundaries and struggle with class pro progression as well in terms of, you know, have I forgotten where I come from, um, but also embracing the new, you know, it's important to embrace the new. So what happened I, get to your, it, I get what change is like. What happened to your relationship as you began this journey to self-improvement? How did your partner, who you describe as being abusive, react mm -hmm. to you taking a bit of control? Um, I think that's where the violence increased, to be quite frank. Um, and that's the challenge with change is the ripple effects. When people are used to you um, in the old version and you begin to tentatively make change, the ripple effects are quite can be quite catastrophic. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, having help through that process I think for me, it, it really resulted in me calling the police, which was something I was always scared to do. But when I changed, he changed. And I think that's something we always need to remember, that when we do change, others don't always stay the same, actually. People can sometimes want us to stay in our box. And at times, that's where the risk does escalate. And, you know, that's where I had no choice but to call the police and... That was really important for me. So relationships are interesting in these difficult times because I, I would imagine quite a few people are facing strains in the relationship. They're finding uh, you know, a partner who used to be out at work five days a week is now at home more perhaps because they're on yeah. furlough or working from home. Pressures of finances, all of that sort of thing. Strains on relationships. Things may be starting to fall apart and that's difficult yeah. for anyone to deal with at the best of times, let alone under these restrictions. And there yeah, doesn't I mean, seem to be any way of, of looking positively and saying, well, you know, maybe going forward I'll meet somebody new. At this point, it's like, well, how would you meet somebody new anyway? Well, we know that actually online dating is on the increase, which is, it can be helpful for people. It can create a distraction. But we also know people don't present uh, as their real self um, online. And, you know, I think the term is, current term is like catfish. So I think we also need to be... What does catfish you know, mean? What does that mean? Oh, catfish means that the person you think you've fallen in love with is absolutely not the person at all. It's actually a persona that they've created online. Uh -huh. And you may have fallen head over heels for that individual. And later you, you come to realise that it's all a myth, it's all a lie. Some people enjoy that kind of psychological manipulation. Um, and so, you know, I think we have to be cautious, obviously, with online dating, you, you know, I'd always be encouraging people to try to have a meet up, to, you know, meet people in the but, fresh, in a public yeah. arena. Can, I suppose you, that. yeah, you can't really do that unless they're a couple of miles away and you just happen to chance upon them whilst having a bit of exercise. You, you, it's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's quite tough if somebody's thinking, well, it's all over. And <laughs> in those situations, normally you might think, well, it's all over and it was bound to end, but at least I've got the chance of finding somebody new. <laughs> at this point, it's, it's all over it or it's falling apart, my relationship, and I don't know what's going to happen next. There you go. And, and let's, not, let's, not, let's not mince... Um, on the reality of what WhatsApp messages, two blue ticks, waiting for someone to reply, being ghosted, being blocked by someone in some sense, you know, this can, these feelings are exacerbated mm. when people are really excited about a distraction or meeting somebody new and the expectations that come with that, that also can fuel a, a kind of epic decline 
when the Romeo we thought we'd uh, met actually isn't the person we hoped at all. Um, so I do really encourage people to be really mindful about, you know, who they're indulging with, the time that they're spending with people. And, and at the same time, you know, you were speaking about, you know, relationships, couples. You know, we also know that after Christmas, there does tend to be a spike, you know, at normal times with with divorce during January, you know, when people have spent Christmases together and, you know, some of the, the, the issues come to the fore. And that is, is you know, even more exacerbated um, at these current times. We need to be aware of that. And, and I think at times it might be about, and I know not everybody's in that position, but how do we, you know, sometimes you might just need to come to a reasonable agreement in the meantime to get through the situation, which is not always easy, um, especially, you know, if abuse, violence um, also comes into play. I do encourage people to call the domestic abuse helpline if that is the situation. Um, if you can, it would be helpful to try to arrange reasonable agreements while we're all in a very sticky situation. Some people are not in a position to be able to move out. Finances, you know, lives are intertwined. And so it's just, like we said, you know, it's, very difficult circumstances um, and you know I know that people are using uh, EAP services personally for therapy EAP is employee, ass employee assistance program yeah. so um, you know I'm seeing clients that way I think more and more employees are using those benefits to get help and some packages do allow you to have legal protection as well mm -hmm. legal support which may provide an opportunity for mediation if we need to work out an agreement in the meantime to help us get through. Just want to pause you for a bit. We'll, we'll take some music, get a weather forecast, and uh, then come back to you just for a brief sort of a bit of uh, crystal gazing almost. Uh, Kitty, I'm keen to know from you what the, the lasting impact of all this is going to be. BBC Radio I'll take you back to uh, Killy Tavener, who is talking this morning about staying positive and the things you can do to get through these difficult times, how you cope with isolation and lockdown and wanting to be with people that you can't be with or trying to get away from people you don't want to be <laughs> with. I was thinking when you were talking earlier, it's uh, a phrase that people use, oh, it's a roller coaster, isn't it? This whole thing feels like it's a roller coaster with no safety harness and we're blindfolded. We, we, we don't really know what's coming next. Uh, it, potentially thrilling, uh, but also incredibly scary. And uh, it's sort of dealing with that and the consequences of all this. I wonder, as as you sort of understand individuals and collective mind processes, Keely, uh, what, what do you think is going to be the the lasting impact? I, I know I've said in the, the last few days this is going to take a generation to pay for, both like sociologically mm -hmm. and economically. Um, mm -hmm. How do you see the the future? In some sense, it reminds me of um, Darwin's theory of the, you know, survival of the fittest. Um, it also makes me think about Jordan Peterson, who talks about the importance of being responsible for ourselves. And I think that is something that we have to learn to take responsibility for ourselves. There's no one who's come in to rescue us. Um, I mean, like I said, we know that, that services are under immense strain. So that does place a, a strong emphasis on the individual. And this is even more so important because communities are compromised because we're not allowed, for obvious reasons, to have community. And that, that's far from easy, you know, developing, you know, just you know, relying purely on our own willpower. Because, you know, for example, I also know that we can be inspired by going to a different environments. I know that, you know, certain tedious tasks I go to the coffee shop to do because being in a different environment helps to refocus me. Again, so much of that is not available to us, which takes us back down to the individual. I think we have to take responsibility for ourselves. I think we need to be careful about what, what we consume, that we might need to limit negativity, you know, that we pay attention to what lowers our mood. But again, what lifts us? You know, I know for me, I've, I've changed my CDs recently and I put on some high vibe music, <laughs> which, you know, and it's, it, these are, this is why small wins are so important. You know, I came across, in, in another clear out I've done, I came across some cassettes. I do not have a cassette recorder. <laughs> but I might get one just to listen to some old hits. 
And then they, I mean, just it, it is interesting that there is this sort of nostalgia thing coming through. I would describe yeah. it as like the resurgence of vinyl and now cassettes as well. People are yeah. making albums yeah. and then releasing on the cassettes. And that means that cassette players are now available to buy much more easily than, say, 10 really? years ago. You you couldn't find one that worked because the, the only ones that existed were old and tired. And now people are kind of making yeah. them again. So that's a really interesting uh, hook back into a, a better time, into the past. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not just the technology, yeah. but the tunes that are on there and the memories they would bring back of how those those particular collections came to be. But it's it's going to be damaging, really, isn't it, for for Western yeah. society? And looking at a global perspective, are are we going to suffer worse in what you might call a Western society than in other parts of the world where maybe it was a simpler life, but it, but it still well, had yeah. been impacted by COVID. It's interesting, isn't it? Because to some degree, it feels like we are regressing back to a time where it is day by day, living day to day, which we're not used to by now. You know, for some strange reason, there were lots of holiday adverts on the television and people were thinking about, you know, that's what we'd usually do around January. Think about what, what holidays we'd have for the year, begin to plan that book holiday at work. We are literally living day to day, which is often more associated with um, developing countries. Mm. which is another reason why it is such a jolt. And, you know, you've also got political, um, potentially p- political power shifts going on at the current time, which is why it's almost like we're literally watching it unfold. Yeah, uh, the, the, the phrase Pandora's box comes to mind, but the, we haven't got time to go into that right now with you, Kelly. It's been a joy to talk with you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, people can find out more about you and the services you offer and indeed that story that you told us of uh, what a life change from uh, working in the uh, big furniture store to now being uh, a qualified master's degree level psychotherapist and stuff. Where, where would people find out more about you, Keely? You can find me at keyforchange.com and my social, links to my social, my YouTube channel, you can find them all there. Keyforchange.com is where you will find more about Keely Tavener. Lovely to talk with you. It's uh, 12 minutes to 11. 